When you look back at your life, what is the legacy of Tina Turner? My legacy is a person that strived for wanting it better and got it. She didn't like working in the fields. It was hot. Painful in a way, not exciting. But um, my family and myself, we sort of made fun. We would sing as we worked. And then there was times, these are just vivid times of like looking back of the memories, the good parts. This one, there was fresh water being brought. And it was uh, brought from the well, from the ground. There was always a taste about that. Something about the memory of taste now that things don't taste the same as they used to, you know, because the source of uh, the food was different. Um, my childhood life was a, a farm girl's daughter. In the winter, it was um, food had been basically put away from uh, the gardens in the summer. My mother would make preserves, preserves as, uh, from the fruit and some things from the garden. And then we would kill the hogs, as they call that, whatever. Was it my family, um, we would bring in other help. And we would sing. I mean, the younger people, not the older people. But when we would bring in help, it was uh, younger kids that was out of school. And they were paid to help us finish because my father owned a lot of land. And we would sing from the radio. That was the fun part. But it was boring when it was just my sister and I because there was no fun. But when we brought in our friends, we would sing and uh, it made the day go faster. Uh, on the plantations, there was a, the house of the master, so to speak. But it wasn't like in slavery. It was like one big family. We were born into knowing that basically you go to the back door. It was out of a respect for the owners of that space. It wasn't just in our heads because we were black. It was out of a form of respect. Now it's a different world, so we know the difference. But it didn't feel bad. Mm. I have to say the Baptist churches. However, before, before the church, I was singing before. When I was a little girl. I was um, always singing for my mother's friends, for my, my grandparents. Always just, it was always there, I think. And, uh, and then, of course, when I joined the church, that was the choir. So all of the emotions and, and, and the style came from the Baptist churches, but I just got tired of it. I, I don't know, you know, blues is, uh, blues, immediately when you think blues, you think of mood and story. I'm tired of stories. <laughs> I'm tired of depression. I am just very optimistic right now. I don't have time to turn on the radio and hear a blues and become depressed. I mean, you immediately sat down and start thinking of the past. You don't think, oh, wonderful, I think I'll get out today and do this. The blues, you sat down and stopped. No. I stopped singing blues and R&B because it was depressing me. You sing about that when you got a problem. Well, my problem was not about being depressed. My problem was about surviving and getting what I want. And you cannot be depressed when you have to get out there and get moving. So I let go of that depressing music. Rock and roll was hot. And then maybe uh, two, three years, four years later, uh, I joined my mother in St. Louis, Missouri. And I've always been the sort of a physically extroverted teenager. I, it wasn't just movies. I was always interested in like other things to find out you know, because I, I wanted to sing or I wanted to entertain. Like in my class book, I said my high school graduation book, it was uh, to, to be a housewife and to entertain. Well, how do you do both? Well, I don't know, but I did both. So far, I did both. So I started going to clubs with my sister. And one of the clubs was a club Manhattan in East St. Louis. And it's where Ike Turner and the Kings of Rhythm was playing. And that was the first professional band I'd ever seen. However, in the South, we had picnics, and there were, how do you call it, just a few musicians, a drummer, a trombone player, and a, uh, maybe, uh, not a, never a piano, but, but just to see a complete band, with a complete rhythm session and horns and all. It was like my first. And I asked Ike if I could sing with him, and I've always been a very thin girl. And the fashion then was mm, heavier girls, especially in the black race. And, and so, since visually I didn't look the part, he never called me. And so it was one of those times when the drummer set the microphone down for my sister and, and of course she can't sing, so I took the mic and started singing. And Ike was really very surprised. I think he really thought that I couldn't sing. So after that, every weekend, I was sneaking out to sing at the adult club some weekends. Makeup and the whole thing. It was really exciting. I mean, I felt like a star. I was riding Cadillacs, and I had furs, and I was wearing all the makeup, and then I had to take all of that stuff off to get into the house, you know. <laughs> it was really quite exciting, really, in my life. 
a question was asked to me once, do you get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say to yourself, oh, you're Tina Turner and you're the best? Oh, my answer was absolutely no. I, I'm far removed from my, my stage, uh, how to say, persona when I'm home. I, I have never allowed Tina Turner to totally take over my life. I love being me too much. I love me more than I love the personification of uh, my career. Yeah, my career. It's two totally separate, uh, if we can call it, entities. On stage, I'm performing. Short dress, hair, I'm given a show. I like to give the show the wholehearted, every, in, every inch of whatever I can do to please the people. But off stage, I consider myself really great person. <laughs> I like me very much. I like anime bullock. Uh, it's a different personality because I'm not acting. I'm myself and I'm enjoying that very much even now.